As you can see, Mrs. Ryan isn't here today. Um, we wanted to be able to move forward and make sure that you stay caught up on some grammar stuff. So um, if you don't recognize my voice, this is Mrs. Culleton. I'm one of the other seventh grade English teachers. I'm in room 201. If you need anything, you can always stop in and ask. Last week, we started looking at infinitives and prepositional phrases as we were looking at marking out impostors in order to find the subject and verb. So we had a little bit of trouble in the workbook, so we thought it might be a good idea just to do a quick review lesson. So what you need in front of you is the paper that your teacher gave you and a writing utensil. And as I go through these strategies and, and mark things off, you're going to do the same things on your paper. After we've done eight examples together, you're going to do the last four by yourself, and you're going to turn that in so we can see how you did. So make sure you pay attention. So we first have to know what's the difference between an infinitive and a prepositional phrase. Um, we talked last week about an infinitive starts with one particular word, the word to. When you see to followed by a verb, that's an infinitive. To run, to play, to hit, to scream, those are infinitives. The tricky thing is that sometimes to can also be a preposition, and I believe you glued this list in your notebook somewhere um, of all the prepositions. Eventually you'll be working on memorizing these as well, um, just like you are your linking and your helping verbs. So we have to be careful with to because it, if it's followed by a verb, it's an infinitive. But if it's any one of these prepositions, whether it's to or about or above or across, and it's followed by a noun, then it's a prepositional phrase. Either way, we're going to call it an imposter. It's going to get in the way of us trying to find the subject and the verb. So if you look at your sentences, remember this mnemonic we had mark. Um, mark out the imposters. Ask if there's a verb, and we work to underline it and then label, decide if it's action or linking. Root out the subject and label it with an S, and then key in on the beginning, ending, and meaning. So we're going to focus on those first three steps today. Looking at your first sentence, the players went to the gym to play a night game. Now remember, you have that list of prepositions there. You can always go back and refer to it if you need to. Um, but we're going to start by crossing out phrases and infinitives. And if I'm not mistaken, all of these are going to really start with two. So really, you're only trying to decide is it a prepositional phrase or an infinitive. So the first imposter I see here, two, I have to decide, is the word after it a verb? Can you the? To the, that doesn't sound like a verb, so it's not an infinitive. If it's a prepositional phrase, and somewhere after to, there has to be a noun. To what? To the gym. So there's a prepositional phrase. I hear, or I see another to here. I want to look after it. Is there a verb? Play. Play is an action. To play is an infinitive. If I was looking for the whole infinitive phrase, to play a night game, I can cross that out. So now I'm left asking, is there a verb? Looking at what's left, the players went. Went is a verb, that's an action. So I'm going to label it AV, and I have to decide my subject. Who went? To find the subject, the players went. So on your paper, you should have to the gym crossed off, to play a night game crossed off, the players as your subject, and went as your action verb. Let's do another one. So if I look at the sentence, John drove to his house to eat Thanksgiving leftovers. I see a to here. I'm going to decide, is it followed by a verb or a noun? To what? To his house is a noun. So that's a prepositional phrase. Come over here, I see another to. To eat. Eat is a verb. I can find that whole infinitive phrase. To eat what? To eat Thanksgiving leftovers. I can get rid of that entire phrase. And I'm now left with a sentence that says, John drove. You can start to see how easy it is to find your subject and verb if you get rid of all those imposters. So I'm going to ask, is there a verb? And I see drove is definitely a verb, so I'm going to underline it. And decide if it's action or linking. That's definitely an action that I can do, drive. So drove is the action verb. And I'm going to ask myself, who drove? John drove. So John is the subject. Now, if you feel comfortable with this at this point, what I would do is pause the screencast 
and do number three. And when you're done with number three, play the screencast again to check it. This is a good way for you to check your understanding. And if you missed it, um, then kind of figure out where your error was and then continue doing that. Sally chose to go home to her room to study her English homework. Starting at the beginning, my first two is followed by go. To go sounds like a verb. That's an infinitive. To her room. Her isn't a verb. You can't her. So I'm looking for a noun somewhere. To what? To her room. Room is a noun. So that's a prepositional phrase. Still see another two here. To followed by study. Study sounds like a verb. To study is an infinitive, and I could find that whole infinitive phrase to study her English homework. So I'm left with Sally chose. I'm going to ask if there's a verb. Chose, that's an action. I can choose something. And now I'm going to ask who chose. Sally chose. The next sentence, again, if you feel comfortable, pause it and then come back and check. Tom ran to the phone to call his girlfriend. The first two here is followed by the. The isn't a verb, so that must be a prepositional phrase, but I still want to make sure by finding the noun. To the phone, phone is a noun, so to the phone is a prepositional phrase. I see another two, it's followed by call. Call sounds like an action. I can call. So to call his girlfriend is an infinitive phrase. Now I'm going to ask if there's a verb. Ran sounds like a verb. I'm going to decide is it action or linking. I can see the action of someone running. So Tom ran is, ran is an action verb. Now I'm going to root out the subject. Who or what ran? Tom ran. So that's my subject. Number seven, again, pause the screencast and check yourself as you go because the last couple you're going to do on your own and um, we're going to check to see how you did. Number seven, we walk to the courthouse to sign the papers. I'm going to mark out my imposters. I see two here. The is in a verb. You can't the. So I know this must be a prepositional phrase if I can find a noun. To the courthouse. Courthouse is a place, so that's a prepositional phrase. To plus sign. Sign is a verb. I can sign something. To sign the papers is an infinitive phrase. So I'm left with we walked. Walked, um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to ask if there's a verb, and I know that walk is an action, so I can label that, and then I'm going to root out the subject. Who walked? We walked. And then the last one we're going to do together before you complete this on your own. The boy went to his room to sleep. I'm going to mark out my imposters. I see two here. I look at the word after two. His. You can't his. That's not a verb. So I'm looking for a noun. To his room is a noun. So that's a prepositional phrase. I see another imposter here with two. I want to look at the word after it, decide if sleep is a verb, and it is. It's something I could do, something I'd love to be doing right now, probably. To sleep is an infinitive. So we've marked out our imposters. Now we're going to ask if there's a verb. The boy went. Went is a verb. I need to decide is it action or linking. Went, I can see someone going, he went. So that's an action verb. Now I want to root out the subject. Who or what went? The boy went. So boy is my subject. Now this might be a little deceiving in looking. If we look at all of our examples, the subject is always one of the first words in the sentence and the verb is usually right after it. That isn't always going to be the case. So it's really important that you start recognizing these phrases, prepositional phrases, infinitives, and marking them out because sometimes your phrase can be in the middle um, and it can be confusing when you're trying to find and figure out what your verb or your subject is. All right, so for the rest of this part of class, you're going to finish 9 through 12. Make sure your name is on your paper and turn it in to the teacher and then your teacher will tell you what you need to do for the remainder of class.